so let's start this session uh, still students are joining but let me start it will take time So yesterday we were discussing about uh, control structures. So we are done with the conditional control statements and selection control statements. Today, uh, so today we'll talk about uh, iterative control models. Okay. So whenever you are talking about iterative control structures, so iterative are nothing but you can call them as uh, so we are talking about iterative control structures. Whenever you are talking about iterative control structures, your iteration, iteration is nothing but you call it as repeating of statements set of statements or set of instructions we call it as an iteration okay so these iterative or loop control models are basically classified into two types the first one we call it as entry control structure and the second one we are calling it as exit control structure So uh, they may ask you, you may get two marks question or five marks question on this, like what is iteration? And they may ask you to categorize the types of iteration models. Then you have to talk about entry control and exit control structures. And uh, you may also have a thing like, what is the difference between entry control structures and exit control structure? They may ask you the differences of these two things. So whenever you're talking about entry control structure, so what is this uh, iterative does is they have two three different statements for any iterative models we have three different statements that happens the first one we have as initialization then we have condition check and the third parameter we have it as re-evaluation parameter Okay, we have these three uh, statements as your inputs for your iterative model. Okay, so in first you are going to initialize a value, then you are going to check the condition, then your statements in the body of the loop will be evaluated, then you will have your re-evaluation parameter. So you don't get confused what is this re-evaluation parameter. You people write I++, J++ or something, right? So you can't mention always it as an increment and decrement because re-evaluation can be anything. Okay, you are evaluating your initial value by using any condition. I can write even I is equals to I by 10. So that's the reason don't call the third statement of your iterative model as re, uh, what do you say, increment or decrement. Kindly call it as re-evaluation parameter. Now, now depending on the Test condition evaluation, your control structures are categorized into two types. As I mentioned, it is exit control structure and the other one is entry control structure. Okay, under exit control structure, we have your do while statement. Under entry control structure, we have while and the other one is for loop. So understand here, if they may ask you the differences between do while loop and while loop, or they may ask you what is the difference between exit control and entry control structure. So first, before answering this, you have to write any iterative control structure has three statements. The first one is initialization, the test condition, and the third parameter is re-evaluation parameter. Now, when you're talking about exit control structure, in exit control structure, first always your test, first always the body of the loop is executed at least once. 
an exit control structure body of flue is executed at least once later test condition is generated that is nothing but under exit control structure and in that you have the statement as do while now when you talk about entry control structure first the condition happens then only your body of this loop will be executed or body of the loop will be evaluated so that is the major difference under exit control you'll have you'll write the example as do while under exit con uh, entry control structure you'll write while and for loop statements now you have to even write the syntax while we'll take the syntax like this while expression body of loop followed by reevaluation parameter and you'll have here initialization now do while has like this initialization do body of loop then while some expression then you have reevaluation parameter okay now this is this syntax you have to write when they ask you the difference between while and do while so now for example if i say i if i is equal to 1 then only i have to print a message called as hi this is my condition okay i say if my value of i is 1 then only i want to print the message as hi now what will i do i write here the condition check as i is equals to 1 in this case no need of reevaluation then i print hi okay if i is only 1 so i'll take initial value of i as 0 for example and i'll write here condition as is i equals to is i is equals to 1 okay when i write this statement what is initial value of i it is 0 so this never happens okay you don't execute any statements which are under while loop but when you talk about do while if i initialize i is equals to 0 at least once you print because the first initialization then you are doing do statement here so you will print at least once hi message then your expression check will happen so that is a basic difference between entry control and exit control in exit control we check the condition that is becoming exit control structure in the entry itself if we check the condition that becomes entry control structure now for example So if you see this do while loop, what happens here? You will get only by message because uh, the statement which is under while loop will not execute. So you will get only by this statement of hi message never happens. Suppose if I change this message, right? now you see you get at least once the message as hi and bye because that is a do while loop you can see hi and bye both are printed so this is exit control while you are exiting your body of the loop we are evaluating the test condition 
okay that is nothing but exit control structure by the entry itself if you evaluate the test condition that comes under the category of entry control structure so that is the basic difference between while loop and do while loop okay now no uh, we have the other statement as for loop so for loop has three things the first one is initialization then you have expression this can be any test condition then you have reevaluation parameter and then you'll have body of statements and then you can close okay for loop take this syntax initialization expression reevaluation parameter body of the loop. so this is about the syntax of for loop okay so depending on your while do while and for loop you have to prepare some programs for chain one is print the prime numbers between 1 to n is the first important next print fibonacci series okay the next one is you have to check a given number is factorial or not factorial of a number reverse of a number sum of digits okay such programs like i can tell you like you can see your lab uh, manual or you can go through your lab syllabus wherever you have the usage of for loop while loop and do while loop so these programs you have to definitely prepare prime numbers fibonacci factorial reverse sum of digits okay uh, even uh, sometimes uh, we are to find the number is palindrome or not okay if you know reverse number palindrome is easy if you know sum of digits we know am strong number is easy and you may they may ask you to find factors of a given not factorial factors of a given number so these programs it's good to preferably it is uh, better you people have to go through these programs okay anybody don't know any of these programs i mean you have never heard about these programs or something like that according to my knowledge everyone have done these programs basically in your classroom work in the first unit anyone out there who didn't do any time these programs let me know so basically from now whatever the concepts we are going to discuss from now that is from loop control structures basically you have to focus more on programs your theory part is almost that's all in the first unit this is the theory whatever has been so i request all the students you can take the screenshot of this and better you go through these programs it will be more helpful okay so next we have something called as in first unit unconditional control structures so till now we are talking about conditional control statements next we have uncond so uh, you can see the name uh, the name itself they say that when you are talking about conditional control statement depending on some conditions your statements evaluations or your set of instructions are being processed now when you are talking about unconditional sta control statements you don't have any condition specified now you see how your control of the program is transferred from one location to another in unconditional control statements we have the very important statement that is good okay so what is this go to statement does go to statement is broadly classified in two areas either you can represent your go to in backward jump and your go to statement can be represented by using forward jump how we identify whether your go to is doing backward jump or whether your go to label is talking about forward jump is depending on the label name which we design for go to okay depending on the uh, label name you can understand how your go to it is forward or backward like for example i write two things here i have some set of instructions let's take um how you will have your forward 
hand backward you see now in forward jump first you will have label name precised by some set of statements okay then you will have your go to label okay now when you are talking about backward jump you will have oh sorry i wrote reverse sorry 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 this is backward label this will be forward go to label then you have here statements then you'll have here label definition again you'll have some statement one statement two so on up to statement n understand here in backward jump what we have is first you'll define your label name which label and you will write some set of statements and you'll have some lines of code here then again you'll have go to label and then forward jump go to label name then you'll have some statements and then you'll have label followed by set of statements now you'll understand i'll give you one small example now let's talk about forward label now first forward go to statements how you will define a forward go to statement is let's take i have my instruction set like this i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 i have some seven lines of instructions in my program okay in line number 2 i write go to 6 print f i print f i have by here okay then i write here 6 is to print welcome and this is end of your loop let's stop here now now when you observe this okay when you observe this line i have some instructions in my program like seven instructions in my main method i have written the first in line number 2 as go to 6 what is happening is when i when your control statement that is when your compiler identifies a go to label automatically go to will move the cursor position from the current location to the label which you have defined i have said go to 6 it will match this label this 6 is label name so somewhere it is matching the 6 label name what am i doing in that action i am just printing the message as welcome so your output will be generated as welcome now if you observe here what is the problem with this unconditional control statement is whenever you invoke go to label name this inputs are been ignored so in forward jump there is a possibility that skip off statements may happen definitely right because when i say go to 6 it is going to label 6 and it is printing the message as welcome and your control is automatically stopped never you again you can't make your position of instruction to be executed from line number 3 or line number 4 so this is the problem with forward jump in forward jump whenever we use go to label name your instructions may your execution may skip some set of statements okay that is forward jump disadvantage now when you talk about backward what do i write in backward so let's take again i have sequence of instructions i have somewhere in line number 3 label i gave the label name as add and i say print f addition okay and i have some statements here then in line number 8 i write a message go to add okay now your program begins from first section that is main method when it sees like this okay that is fine that doesn't have does doesn't happen anything it will goes in sequence order now when it sees go to add 
automatically the control from this location is transmitted to line number 3 now what happens again the sequence of instructions from line number 4 to 7 are executed again in line number 8 you have again a call to method go to add again your control is transmitted to label add again this set of instructions are executed again you will call go to add so when you observe in backward whenever you are using a backward go to statement the execution of instructions will be in infinite loop so these are the disadvantages of your go to statement that is the reason whenever you are writing a good programmer never use go to statements until unless you it is necessary generally we use your go to to have your access coordinates or whenever you have a specific location whenever you want to reach your cursor to that particular position then we use this go to so whenever if you are using a forward jump in go to if with go if you are in go to statement if you are using a forward jump label what happens is there is a possibility of skipping of statements which are written in between the label name and the statement call and in backward jump what happens is there is a possibility of your um, uh, working model may fall into infinite loop which and the statements which are between label name and go to statement will be executed for infinite number of times so this is the disadvantage of go to statements and I, this you will write under unconditional control structure go to is the first thing anyone has any doubt with these two everyone are clear with go to statements anyone want me to repeat let me know please is everyone clear with go to please let me know let me have a message that you understood or you want me to repeat roll number 5 and 8 is it clear with for you go to statement yes okay so you have another uh, few statements like you have break and continue this might be for two marks question so we generally use break and continues only in loop control structures we can't use them in conditional statement like if and else doesn't have break okay for example if i write something like this in for loop when i is equals to something you have statement i less than 10 i plus plus if i say print hi i write if i value reaches to 2 then break okay then when i do this first i is initialized you get high message i is incremented to 2 it will print high when it observes if i value is 2 automatically if you break the loop automatically breaks okay break will break the iteration completely once it is satisfying the condition whereas continue what does it do is continue will only ignore the next step which is immediately after and later on it will continue the loop execution i'll show you how to do that okay
can write this in for example. So only once it is printed because when I value is one, the condition is false. So you first for the first time your hello message is printed. When I becomes two, you are breaking your loop. Okay. Now I write here. So nothing is printed. Why? Can someone answer me why nothing is printed? Understand here what is happening. When when first time when I value is one, the loop is the loop is what should happen? Condition is checked, right? Condition is false. What is the next line? Continue. Will this continue happen any time? Yes, exactly. So here you can write. Now you can see, you will get the message. So what is happening if I value is two? Continue. You are ignoring by statement. Only this line doesn't happen when I value is two. The remaining times you will be printing the message as hello. Okay, continue. What does it do? Is it will ignore the next immediate line. That is line number nine is ignored whenever you execute the line statement as continue. Okay. Now if I remove this. Nothing is printed. Okay. So you get only by your hello message will be never be printed because I have used continue in line number ten. Okay. When I use line number ten, the next immediate line will be ignored. So line number eleven is ignored for all the times whenever this loop is executed. Okay. So this is about your break and continue. They may ask you what is the difference between break and continue. So in break, what do you write is if the for if any condition check is done and if it is satisfied, break will completely break the execution of your loop. It will come out of the loop execution or it will come out of the statements execution. Whenever you are talking about continue. Whenever you are talking about, come on now. Whenever you are talking about continue, continue will ignore the next lines. Okay. Yes. Whatever the lines we are going to define, that will be ignored automatically. Okay. So. Continue. What does it do? Is the next statements whatever you have that will be ignored, and the rest have to be. As it is alone. And by how did you get this now? Continue is ignoring your loop. Okay, your loop is ignored. Okay, you are you are not executing this loop. That's the reason it is only printing you the message hi welcome and by because continue is working and that for loop. So that loop doesn't happen any time. Okay, so this is about continue and break. So, so these are the concepts which are related to your unit one. So tomorrow we will be having session for unit two, and you will be having complete unit two. 
so if you have any doubts in unit 1 kindly let me know now i'll complete unit 1 clarifications like whatever the questions you have so by the time i want to show you something else you people ask me if you have any doubts still you have any pending doubts you can ask me and in unit 1 you also see the precedence and associativity chart that i want to say command line arguments not now in files i'll tell you you won't understand now if you do okay that concept will be discussed using files command line yes 55g what is your doubt Five and eight. I'll tell you command line arguments with files concept. It will be more easy for you. Um, so, think anyone has any doubts? Let me clarify first any doubts today, and I want to show you a few things. You also have to see the precedence and associativity rules. That is the thing which you have to learn. How your precedence chart and associativity is created. And I want to show something. Ma'am, lengthy chapter gives you some important questions. See, this is JNT. Oh, I can't say that these questions come, but uh, anyhow, your previous questions have been shared. Okay, you. I think uh, on KMIT online in study material we have posted the you notes know, and everything. So you can observe here. They will ask you the decimal equivalent of this, whatever we have discussed. What is ternary operand? You can see the previous. Can everyone see this? Whatever I am showing you, short answers and long answers. Can you see the screen? Are you okay? Okay, fine. So if you see here, you observe here in short answers from the previous questions, whatever have been. So they are asking. Second question is, what is ternary operator? Give some example. You can write your own example if this is clear to them. What are different types of type casting? Implicit and explicit type castings. You will learn that. and you have to write brief notes on computer languages as discussed binary i mean machine level language high level language and assembly language what is significance of continuous statement with example right what is size of double data type okay what is conversion specifier is nothing but you call it as a format specifier that is either it is percentile c percentile d or percentile i okay so write a c program to interchange two values without using that is swapping of two numbers without using three two i mean third variable how do you do by using your addition and subtraction symbols by using your arithmetic operators you can do that what is a flow chart explain with example eighth question what is write an algorithm to check the given number is prime or not i was telling you right which programs you have to prepare what is c structured programming language explain name any five features of c program write any two bit wise operators with so these are the frequently asked from 3 4 years questions these 12 no as i told associate first question in long answer associativity and precedence i told you to prepare that chart multi way selectional statement that is about your switch statement okay someone is asking ma'am but we don't have short answers uh i don't say that you don't have short answers we don't know what is the exam pattern according to the previous exams they gave you long so what i am saying is if it is for 8 marks question suppose if, if they gave you the question paper for 15 mark there is a scope that they will ask you what is a flow chart and draw the flow chart to implement the technique of right uh, sorry to write to implement the technique of to check whether number is prime or not or to print the fibonacci series okay so try to learn this definitions might be they may give you the 15 marks as abc columns if possible okay that's the reason i'm asking you to focus and uh, fourth one what is significant of break and continue what are various control structures iterative control selectional control and conditional control so you can check here sixth question number is armstrong or not flow chart to find average of 10 numbers associativity multi way factorial switch write the steps in writing a c program hope you all remember what are the basic steps in writing c program see in the 14th question again they ask about bitwise operators so bitwise operators are very important now 15th question is write program to print fibonacci series and the 16th you can see the differences a between while loop and do while so these are all the things that were asked from past 3 or 4 years which are important if you want i'll share this part from first unit if you want i'll share this uh, one slide not issue 
okay so better whatever we have discussed focus on them and uh, try to do uh, read them actually whatever the notes has been shared whatever the material is available try to learn it in easy way and try to give them more examples for anything even if they ask or not it is our responsibility to write a basic simple example because it is a programming language subject it is not a theory subject okay anyone has any more doubts let me know explain about executing a c program what do you want executing a c program c okay fine i understood i explain you right okay what is a dot and okay it's very simple actually so basically whenever a user writes a program let's take you have a program p1 you always save it as p1.c now this after it has been compiled your p1.c file is been translated into machine form that is nothing but in the form of byte form this will be as p1.obj okay your object code is generated once your object code is generated and it is syntactically and if it is semantically field then you will be having a code that is generated as executable code that is nothing but you call it as p1.exe executable code is nothing but always it is ready for program execution object code is not ready for execution it is only free from semantics and syntaxes okay you are only verifying the syntaxes and semantics when you are converting your dot c file to dot obj once your object code is free from all your syntax and semantic rules then only your program is under execution phase then you will have your executable code of course executable code and object code are machine readable format not user readable format okay still anyone has any more doubts Anyone else has any more doubts? Ma'am, in this, how many MCQs we'll have? Uh, you will get a random questions. Actually, we don't know how many you are going to get. Mm, one second, hold on. I'll just find it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it is a random uh, thing, actually. So every student will be having twenty-five questions. Each of the student will be getting twenty-five objective questions for every subject. Okay. Unit one notes has been already shared for your CRs of chapter one and chapter two. Once, please find it with your class CRs. I already shared long back, almost one week back. I have shared them. Okay. You'll have MCQs for mids. Okay. So I assume that all are clear with first unit. What you have to read, and you are clear with what concepts you are having in first unit, chapter one and chapter two. Yes. So prepare well. Okay. So tomorrow we'll talk about. Uh, you want? Uh, we'll complete array, and then we'll talk about functions. Okay. So thank you all. Have a nice day. I'll end the meeting.